2007, the British Medical Journal cited provision of clean water and the removal of wastewater have been hailed as the single greatest contribution to public health over the past 150 years. This sentence underlines what was the goal of wastewater treatment in the past, to remove pollutants and pathogens and to protect the human health and the environment. A task that is embedded in the Sustainable Development Goal number six and still is a pillar of wastewater treatment. However, other challenges and opportunities are now rising. Let's have an overlook to what a wastewater treatment plant may become and serve for in the next future. We can identify two main tasks and goals. To improve efficiency in removing priority substances and emerging contaminants, and to become resource recovery factories. As for the first, the evolution of standards has always been directed towards the reduction of concentration to improve the quality of receiving water bodies. Here you can see how the limit in concentration of three pollutants decreased along the years. A further revision of standards may be expected in the future to include new parameters. Emerging contaminants is a broad definition for many substances. They are called emerging because the level of risk they pose is not yet ascertained. Thus, they are under scrutiny by the scientific community to understand if there is a need to reduce their content at the discharge and put standards. Examples include pharmaceuticals and endocrine disrupting compounds. Their concentration in wastewater is usually very low, like a few drops in a lake of one million cubic meter. A current plant is able to partly reduce quite a lot of these substances, even above 90%. Some of them, on the contrary, are recalcitrant and the installation of new treatments would be needed in case of new standards coming in force. A recent emerging contaminant in wastewater that has raised much concern is microplastic. Microplastics are tiny fibers and fragments of various shapes, dimensions in the range from five millimeters down to one micron. Being so recent this issue, the methods to sample and analyze microplastics are still under development. A main source of microplastics in municipal wastewater is the washing of synthetic textiles. Other microplastics are intentionally added in some products or come from the fragmentation of plastic-made structures, including plastic objects improperly disposed of. The removal of microplastics in a common plant is very effective, more than 90%. However, microplastics are not eliminated, but they end up in grit and sludges. Moving to the second goal, we cannot miss the opportunity to transform a current plant into a water resource recovery facility to stand climate change and the overexploitation of natural resources. This paradigm shift requires two complementary trajectories, extending the application of available techniques and developing new technological processes and solutions. The technological possibilities extensively studied in the past decades are vast. Energy can be recovered as biofuels, electricity, and heat. Some options are current and common, like biogas and biomethane production. Other options show an increasing application, like heat pumps or sludge incineration. Other options are not widely applied or are under development. The nutrients in wastewater, mainly nitrogen and phosphorus, can be recovered and be used as fertilizers. Sludge application on land is a simple and common option, but products with higher purity and greater added values can be also exploited, like struvite. Besides fertilizers, other products can be recovered from wastewater, polymers, volatile fatty acids, metals, and more. Some of these roots are already applied in a few plants. You see here two examples. The cellulose from wastewater recovered for insulation. The sand from the gritting units recycled as inert material for road maintenance and the construction sector. A survey made a few years ago on a number of Italian wastewater treatment plants showed a still limited diffusion of resource recovery practices, the more in the lower dimension plants. But the path is open 
and several water utilities are on the track. There are, however, some bottlenecks that may slow down this paradigm shift. From a technical point of view, wastewater is an uncommon raw material to deal with because compounds are highly diluted, making their recovery more difficult. Also, flow and composition are very variable in time. Secondly, recover products must be hygienized to prevent the presence of pathogens. Third, traces of hazardous elements may be present and should be removed, adding more cost for their recovery. Finally, a strong social and political acceptance and support are needed. In most cases, however, the main bottlenecks are the process cost, the resource quality and the market supply potential. They should not be considered as a barrier to resource recovery implementation, but on the contrary, as a starting point for future optimization. Thank you.